This is one of a series of lectures given by the Further Math Support Programme to support revision uh, of A-level mathematics modules. In this module, or in this lecture, we'll be looking at Edexcel Mechanics 1 and the topic Momentum and Impulse. The specification for Edexcel uh, simply says that you should have um, a knowledge of the impulse momentum principle, that is that the impulse is equal to change in momentum and the idea of conservation of momentum uh, applied to quite simple situations where two particles are colliding directly. Well remember then uh, Newton's second law of motion says that the resultant force on a body is proportional to the rate of change of momentum. Now we can simplify that a little bit and say that therefore the fourth is equal to mv, momentum is defined as mv, the mass multiplied by velocity, so the change of momentum mv minus mu divided by time. And then rearranging that equation gives us that ft, force multiplied by time, this is a quantity known as impulse, that is then equal to mv minus mu. So we have the well-known equation then that the impulse is equal to change in momentum. Well, using that the impulse is equal to change in momentum, we can look at what happens in a collision. So here we have two objects, uh, m1 and m2, with uh, initial Velocity, velocities u1 and u2 and then showing a collision having taken place the final velocities v1 and v2. Now in the collision then each of the bodies experiences an equal and opposite force at the same time. So an equal and opposite impulse. That means that m1 has an experiences an, an impulse in one direction and M2 experiences an equal and opposite impulse. Well if the impulses are equal and opposite then that gives us uh, the resultant force multiplied by time is zero and therefore the change in momentum is zero. And finally therefore momentum is conserved in a collision or we can write that down as the equation well known m1 u1 plus m2 u2 that's the momentum before the impact is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 the momentum after impact. Okay, we'll now illustrate those ideas by looking at some exam questions. First question from January 2010 paper. I'm just reading through the question then. It says that a particle A, mass 2 kilograms, is moving in a straight horizontal line with a speed of 12 meters per second. Another particle of mass M kilograms, so an unknown mass, is moving in the same straight line in the opposite direction with speed 8 meters per second. The particles collide. And the direction of motion of A is unchanged by the collision. And we're told that after the collision, A is moving with speed 3 meters per second and B moving with 4 meters per second. So with that information, we're asked to find the magnitude of the impulse exerted by B on A in the collision and then also the value of M. So let's start by putting the information onto a diagram. So we have initially A, which is 2 kilograms, moving in a direction with speed 12 meters per second, and B of mass M moving in the opposite direction with speed 8 meters per second. 
After the impact, we're told that A's direction doesn't change. And it's moving with 3 meters per second as its speed. Of course, if A's direction is from left to right, as I've drawn my diagram, then B must be moving in the same direction now as they've impacted, they haven't gone through each other. And so there's my situation showing the before and after. In part A of the question, we're asked to find the magnitude of the impulse exerted by B on A. So we can say that the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. And using that, it doesn't really matter if we use the uh, change of momentum in A or B, because remember they'll be equal in uh, and opposite. But the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So writing down the change for A, we have got that is equal to 12 multiplied by 2, and then minus from that 3 multiplied by 2. So that's its mass multiplied by the um, velocity before impact and then minus the mass multiplied by velocity after the impact. Notice again we're only asked for the magnitude so it doesn't matter about the directions here as long as we're subtracting one from the other to give the change and this turns out to be 18. Um, momentum uh, impulse rather, force multiplied by time, so units of that, newton seconds. In part B, we're asked to find the value of m. Well, we can use the idea of conservation of momentum to do that. So, writing down a conservation equation we have that the momentum before impact, that's 2 multiplied by 12, minus, because it's mo the B is moving in the opposite direction, so we've got minus the 8 multiplied by the mass M. And then afterwards, 2 multiplied by 3, and plus, because we know that uh, M is moving in the uh, sorry B is moving in the same direction, so we've got four M. Equating the, those are right, changing the direction. If we we add uh, changing sides of the equation rather, if we add eight M, we get twelve M on one side of the equation, and then the other side, twenty four minus six, so eighteen, and that gives us that M is equal to 1.5 and of course mass is in this particular case in kilograms so the mass is 1.5 kilograms we could have done that second part of the question in a, an alternative way by saying that we know that the impulse on B is exactly the same as the impulse on A in terms of its magnitude so that there would be a, an 18 newton second change in uh, the momentum and that would have given us the same answer. Right, looking at the way the marks are allocated uh, for this question, there are two marks for the first part. There's simply a method mark for using impulses, change in momentum and an accuracy mark for getting the answer 18. In the second part of the question, um, M1, A1 for a correct conservation momentum equation, and then a D, a dependent method marks. So that means that as long as you've got the correct equation to start off with, then a method mark for uh, solving that equation or attempting to solve it and an accuracy mark for getting the correct value of 1.5 kilograms. 
The June 2011 question on uh, momentum is in front of us now. Uh, just reading through this again, particle P mass 3 kilograms and Q mass 2 kilograms, so this time we know both masses. Particles moving in opposite directions on a smooth horizontal plane and they collide. Immediately before we have 3 meters per second for P and 2 meters per second for Q. And then after the collisions both particles move in the same direction but their speeds differ by 1 meter per second. And we're asked to find the speed of each particle after the collision. And having done that, work out the magnitude of the impulse uh, exerted, this time of P on Q. So in the first part of the question, it's going to be conservation of momentum. And in the second part of the question, having got the speed, we can then calculate the impulse. So drawing a diagram of the situation again, we start off with P, which has got mass 3 moving at 3 meters per second, and Q of mass 2 moving in the opposite direction with 2 meters per second. They both move off uh, afterwards in the same direction. We don't know which direction that is initially, so let's assume that P is moving to, to the right. And Q is moving also in the same direction, but at a speed 1 meter per second extra, so V plus 1 in this case. So it doesn't really matter if you don't know the direction or you're not sure of the direction. You put it in there and if we've got it wrong, then V will turn out to be negative in, in, in the answer. So it was actually moving in the opposite direction. So there we are. In the first part of the question now, we can write down an equation for conservation of momentum. And that just simply looks at the momentum before the impact. So 3 multiplied by 3 minus 2 multiplied by 2 because the, the Q is moving in the opposite direction is equal to 3V and plus 2 times V plus 1. Well, that's a straightforward enough equation. 5 on the left-hand side, 5V plus 2 on the right hand side so V is equal to 3 over 5 meters per second. Now notice the question asks us for the speed of each particle after the collision so we really ought to quote that what we've got here P moves with speed 3 over 5 meters per second and Q moves with speed 1 greater than that so that is um, equal to 8 over 5 meters per second. In the second part of the equation we can simply look at the um, change in momentum of Q. We want the magnitude of the change in momentum that will be equal to the impulse so that in B we can say that the change in momentum of Q is equal to the impulse that we're trying to find and that means that the impulse is equal to what it's, it has, it's 2 multiplied by 8 over 5 and then minus 2 multiplied by negative 2. So look, the, the momentum has changed from going to the, from right to, sorry, I beg your pardon, yes, right to left and then going from left to right so that you must make sure that we've got the negative 2 in there. The change is uh, the two things added together which gives us 7.2 in this particular case. 
and again the units newton seconds. Five marks available in the first part of the question and those marks uh, were given firstly a, a method mark M1 and an accuracy mark for writing down the conservation of momentum. Solving that and getting the V equal to three fifths with a further M1 A1 and then finally an A1 for getting eight fifths. That was an A1 follow through in fact so that if you'd got V incorrect then you would still get your mark for adding one to it to get Q. Uh, three marks available in the second part of the question. M1 A1 for using the impulse was equal to the change in momentum equation the A accuracy getting it correct and then a further A1 mark for getting the value 7.2. Well that's the end of this revision session for um, impulse and momentum. You can find other resources at the uh, website for the furthermathematics.org.uk and also uh, there are other lectures available for other topics and modules.